Welcome to the dawn, the Thomas timeline. We go through the Thomas timeline. Is this truly the Thomas timeline? Welcome to another edition of the Dumbest Timeline. I am your host, Brian Holiday, and I am very interested in this week's subject. So many of you have probably seen it. I would imagine some of you have maybe even used it by now. And if you haven't, by God, it is very interesting times. So Google developed something called Notebook LM. And what it is, it's a tool that I guess is designed with an AI to help people study. Now, I actually tested it. I wrote a review and I got the AI to analyze the review as if I was a student in school who had to break down someone's review for a class. It sounds convoluted and I probably could have used someone else's review, but the reason I did it this way is because, funny enough, this is almost a connected episode because if you're listening to this now this is the dumbest timeline but i'm also going to be on geek cypher talking about joker folia du on the podcast this week so if you're listening to this now this is a breakdown of the review i wrote and the notes i took for that film and how i got notebook lm to help me break down the review I wrote to even go deeper in understanding what I said and used the notebook LM to flesh out some of the ideas because it analyzed my review as if it was trying to teach someone to understand the subject of my review. Yes, it sounds ridiculous when I say it, but let me explain. First things first, this week I saw Joker Folia Du. I have things to say. I'll say them on Geek Cypher. Make sure you tune into that this week. I wrote a review. It's about, I don't know, some 2,500 words. When I wrote the review, I then uploaded it to the source section of the Notebook LM, which is you know in beta. When you upload a document to it, it lets you create a chat where you can discuss with the AI what the subject matter is. Then it also has a note section and an analysis section where it creates quizzes for you like a study guide. So you can upload as many sources for a subject that you want so that it can help you, I guess, review the material even better. In this case, it's only my one review, 2,500 words. It's not really detailed, but it does such a crazy job. (laughs) I'm laughing because it's kind of weird to read something that I wrote, but have it broken down as a means to teach someone something, you know, like it's a very weird interaction. AI creates a lot of weird things like this, weird experiences where, you know, usually you would ask a friend to like break down what you wrote or review it for you. And then you could discuss it with your friend. And instead I used AI to do that. And not that I don't have amazing friends that would have done this with me, but the reason I did it specifically is so I could test out notebook LM. So I'll start the first section. I asked it to write like a quiz. So Joker folia de analysis instructions, answer the following questions, two to three sentences based on the provided excerpt. What is the author's primary criticism of the decisions to make Joker folie de? Answer. The author believes that the original Joker film stood well on its own and didn't require a sequel. Question two. What previous successful film does the author compare the first Joker film to? Answer. The author compares Joker, the film, to Martin Scorsese's The King of Comedy. So I do compare it in my review. I don't mention that it's Martin Scorsese's film. I just say the king of comedy. So the AI is already taking the things I wrote in my review. And when I upload it to Notebook LM and ask it to create a guide, it's doing more research on its own. It's looking up things. It understands that the king of comedy is a 
Martin Scorsese film that Todd Phillips is inspired by when making the film The Joker. I don't say that. I just say The King of Comedy. There are probably other films called The King of Comedy, but the AI understands in the context because there's probably numerous things online that make reference to the fact that Todd Phillips used The King of Comedy as inspiration in some parts. There's a lot of questions, so I won't go through all of them. I'll go through another one that I found really interesting. Number seven, how does the author compare Joker to Sony's Venom? Answer, the author compares Joker to Venom in both film aimed to establish the villain without involving their respective heroes, Batman and Spider-Man. So again, I just mentioned Venom. It understands in context. It does the research, quote unquote, not does the research, but you know, it's a machine. So it essentially just searches for information. Then another thing that I asked it to do was create a timeline of the project Joker Folia Du. So I didn't write this information in my review. I gave a review that's 2,500 words. That's a review of the film. I didn't give any information on the making of the film. I just, I mentioned the director. I mentioned the actors, but I don't talk about the making of the film. I don't talk about the background of how the film was made. I talk about the film itself and how I liked it or disliked it and the things I found interesting or the things I didn't find interesting or the things that I felt that they missed. Then with that review, it wrote this. This source focuses on the creation and reception of Joker Folia Du. So a traditional timeline of events within the film is not applicable. Instead, we can present a timeline of events surrounding the film's development and potential future. Timeline 1. Success of Joker 2019. Todd Phillips' Joker becomes a critical and commercial success. Despite initial skepticism, Joaquin Phoenix performs as Arthur Fleck, garners acclaim. Sequel, greenlit. Despite Phillips' initial stance against the sequel, Joker, Folie Adieu, is greenlit, potentially influenced by the first film success and studio pressure. Remember, I didn't put any of this. I didn't write any of this. This is the AI off of my review, taking my comments on the film and turning those comments and using that as a basis for researching more information. Three, musical direction. Phillips decides to make the sequel a musical, incorporating singing and dancing elements into the narrative. Casting. Lady Gaga is cast as Harley Quinn, chosen for her singing and acting abilities. Production and release. Joker. Folie de filmed and released. Critical reception. Again, I didn't ask it to look up critics' responses to the film. I just put my own review in. The film received mixed reviews, with criticism aimed at the musical direction and Harley Quinn's characterization. Future speculation. Now, this part I did say. This I did right, and it took pretty much directly what I said. The source speculates on potential spinoffs focused on Harley Quinn or Two-Face and the possibility of Joker 3, the potential for the grittier Gotham to be integrated into a larger DC universe under James Gunn and Peter Safran is also considered. I find it very interesting that they were able to take my 2,500-word review and pinpoint the things I said and use those things as a launching point to do more research and gather more information so that it could then be turned into a study guide. It could then be turned into a reference sheet. All these things are here. It's very interesting to see how this thing works. Uh, I think for example, I'm going to I'm going to click on one of the buttons right now while I'm doing this with you. I also am very excited to play the AI generated conversation that it creates. Cuz you can upload sources and information into this platform and once it reviews all the sources, you can open up your notebook guide and you have like a frequently asked question section, the study guide section which I already explained. You can have a table of content created. So if the document is larger, it can break down a table of contents. Timeline, which is the second thing that I reference, And then you have briefing doc. So I'm going to click on briefing doc right now. And I'm going to let it create that. I'm also going to include the audio that I recorded right now for you to listen to. And I'll come back once the briefing doc is created so that I can read through that and discuss that a little bit. Okay, so sequels, right. 
They can be amazing or they can be, well, a total letdown. Yeah, it's a gamble for sure. Exactly. And today we're diving deep into Joker, fully ado. We found this online review and let me tell you, this critic does not hold back. Oh, really? Like, what kind of stuff are we talking about here? Well, they actually compare it to the Penguin series, which, you know, delves into the origin story of the Penguin in Gotham. And they seem to think that DC might be heading in a very particular direction with these movies. Interesting. So a pattern, maybe? Maybe. And it gets better. When describing the plot, they actually use the phrase fucking around and finding out. Oh, wow. All right. So this critic's not mincing words. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we're in for some strong opinions. Definitely. And one of the things they really go after is the portrayal of Harley Quinn. Yeah, Harley Quinn is tricky. Adapting her for the screen, especially with Joker, it's tough. I mean, think about it. In the comics, her origin story is so closely tied to his. Trying to give her independence while acknowledging that connection it's a tightrope walk. Right, like trying to have your cake and eat it too. Although this critic did give the film props for one thing. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> and I, I hope you enjoyed the insanity of that as much as I did. The fact that those voices are AI generated, having a conversation about my review that I wrote, that I uploaded to their <laughs> site <laughs> so that it could create this fake podcast interaction is fascinating. The other reason I find this super interesting is because the other reason I find this super interesting is at the time that I'm recording this, just recently, someone uploaded a notebook LM conversation similar to what you just heard, in which the AIs figure out that they're an AI and they have an existential crisis. Obviously, people started freaking out on the internet, but based on having used this, I understand that I can upload any document and pretty much get them to react the way they want. The original version of this episode that I was going to do wasn't with my own review of Joker. The original version was the lyrics to the song Woe by Black Rob. And when I uploaded that, I didn't take into consideration that there's no filter on this. So when it did the, you know, fake conversation and was breaking down the lyrics, it started referencing the lyrics. And unfortunately, as you can imagine, back in the day, Black Rob, not a lot of people were questioning his homophobic lyrics. And he says some F words that are homophobic in the song. And the AI says it. And I thought to myself, oh, there's no filter here. It doesn't understand to avoid saying things like that. And it didn't say it in a way of breaking down why Black Rob used homophobic lyrics. They're just reading the lyrics and discussing back and forth how cool it is that he used woe. And then they start to read the homophobic F word. And I had to stop and I was like, Jesus, who designed this thing? Now, I know it's in beta and obviously it it's, needs some work. But this is where we're at. This is where we're at the point where a technology can be created. And as long as you have an email, you can get access to it to have voices created that can pretty much say and do anything with no filter. And sure, I mean, some people might say well, there's too many filters in the world. But when I am listening to this, I have concerns. Anyways, back to the briefing doc. So while it was playing, I created that briefing doc. So it breaks down the review and titles it A Disappointing Sequel. The briefing document analyzes a review of the film Joker Folia Deux, explores the author's disappointment and critiques of the sequel. Main themes, unnecessary sequel, genre misfire, missed opportunity, Arthur Fleck is not the Joker, world building potential, important ideas and facts. The review praises Joaquin Phoenix performance as Arthur Fleck, the author contrasts the New York Gotham of Phillips with the New Jersey Gotham of Matt Reeves, hinting at the possibility of separate coexisting DC universes. I do mention that in my review. The review uses the example of Sony's Venom. Yeah, I do mention that. And then it has some direct quotes. So it creates a kind of like a summary document so that let's say you had to do a paper or not a paper. Let's say you had to do an oral presentation in class and you wanted to find a way to break it down so that you could have notes and not actually have read the thing. That's what the briefing doc kind of does. 
Now I know this 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 episode feels a little weird because it's more just me being in awe of the insanity of a new tool that exists. I'm not going to lie to you. I am still freaked out by it because not because I'm ever freaked out by AI, but more just that this tool was made available for people to use and has again no filters in it and I worry about what that means when other people get access to it and what types of things you can get it to say. Now, don't, I mean, you can get an AI voice to pretty much say anything right now. If you go on Eleven Labs, ideally they have filters in place so that you can't just generate inappropriate language. The reason Notebook LM seems a little misguided is they don't have that yet. And that leads me to believe they're just collecting all the data from the sources and people are playing around with it and it's helping them build out their AI more. And of course, that's what they're doing. And we should all be concerned about it. And like I said in the last episode, my hope for AI does not rest in anything controlled by major corporations, but more in the potential use in the medical sphere and helping people who have disabilities and, you know, maybe helping someone with dyslexia and trying to help them, you know, whatever it may be. The way we're using AI now, creating study guides for students so that they could essentially cheat is not the way, in my opinion, that it should be going forward. But I do think that Notebook LM is useful for some students who may need something like this. And for someone like me, when I was younger, having voices discuss a subject would have been better, but having subjects discuss a subject based off of any source that I put into it, in which I can put false information and it would still create a document, that's concerning. So we're still at a sum zero with this. It's cool. Uh, there's a lot of really big hype around it. Ultimately, not that great of a tool, but potential is there. So those are my thoughts. That's another episode of this wild podcast. And don't forget to tune in to Geek Cypher this week so you can hear my actual full detailed review of Joker for the adieu. Thanks. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.